My name is Alan Rowett. I'm the owner of the Vault Record Shop. We've got two branches, one here in Bournemouth and one in Christchurch. The history of the shop goes back about five, six years when we opened the first one up in a small town called Stalbridge up in Shaftesbury in the north of Dorset, which was a kind of a play thing. And now this is reality and uh, we're, we've got two stores in two busy high streets and uh, it's doing pretty well. Well, I'm fif 52 now, so I've been collecting since about the early 1970s. I think uh, I was inspired by my mum who had a record player in the corner and she used to have it on every Sunday and just play records. I just got fascinated by that. And one year I was given a radio for Christmas and I just liked the you know, all the different records, all the sounds that were coming out of it. And then I realised you could actually buy them all because I, I thought they were just on the radio. So I've been buying and collecting records since the early 1970s. My personal collection is probably about 30, 40,000. LPs and singles. I don't really collect. Uh, there, there are some people who will want m multiple versions of records, like well, a colour ver colour vinyl or an original. I'm, I'm quite happy with just one copy. And but my to pin down my favourite genre is I'm very much a singer songwriter fan of artists from the 1970s. People who wrote their own songs and had something to say. People like Dan Fogelberg, Boz Gags, James Taylor, people like that, who are just good singer-songwriters who can write a good song. And of course their influence has been carried on into music today. I, I also listen to CDs in the car because trying to play a record in the car is not very easy. When you go around the corner it's not great. Um, and also streaming services, which uh, again is ideal for... You, d you don't particularly want a copy of it. You can't have a copy of everything. And s s things like Spotify and Amazon are great because you can delve into catalogues you probably wouldn't want to invest in. And then sometimes you think, oh, that's an artist I've not heard of before. You play some albums, then you end up going and buying a physical copy of it. Mm. It's a completely across the board. It's, uh, it's every generation, a every age group is buying different kind of things. You, you really can't pin it down. You know, people are reinvesting in records they got rid of in the late 80s when CDs were sold up as the best new thing. Um, and then you've got a new young generation, teenagers who are buying records for the very first time, like records that are 30, 40 years old, that they're, they're getting to hear for the first time. No, I don't think vinyl will ever die out. Uh, it's, 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 it's certainly hit its peak. Its peak was the 60s, the 70s, early 80s. It started to die out when the compact disc came in. And certainly in the last eight, nine years, since about 2010, there has been a lot more interest in it again. But it never even died out in those dead periods. There was DJs who were playing dance music. They still preferred to play it on vinyl, so there was still limited pressings. It still only makes up 2% of total recorded sales in the whole of the world. But it's, it's never going to go away. The future of vinyl, it hasn't really changed. The, the product we've got here, we sell now, it's still basically the same as it was when it was invented 50, 60 years ago, it's still good 180 gram vinyl um, with music on it. And I don't, you can't really change. The only way you can probably change it in the future, how it's going to progress, is deluxe editions with um, posters and t-shirts in it. But in the end, a record is always going to be a record. Hi, my name's Adam Forrester, and I go to Bournemouth University and have been collecting vinyl for about two years. I'm buying all the time, listening all the time, and if, if I really like an album, I'll, I'll end up buying it. I buy vinyl because I really appreciate that, that album. The fact that um, it, it's about giving the artist your recognition. That £20 is my gift to them saying, thanks, I really enjoyed this, I would like another. You, you're holding this product, you're, because you own it, you have some sort of attraction to it. I do, yeah, so I'm not a massive CD guy, although I was growing up in the CD era. See, I use Spotify as well, um, a lot. But I mean, I'll probably listen to Spotify more than I listen to vinyl, just because it is easier. But if I really want to sit down and listen to an album, I'll pop on a record. Music quality, yes, vinyl is the best. CD is done at 44.1 kilohertz or something, which is, which is the top level that your ear can detect. So technically, if you're listening to a CD or a vinyl, you won't be able to tell the difference. You can't find loads of songs that are on vinyl than you can on Spotify. You know, even in the darkest periods, DJs always coming to, to the vinyl shops 
Well, they are because there's just more depth in music and vinyl than there is in any other service. <laughs>